Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel. For a Pure Arts 1-6 scale figure and vehicle unboxing and review. Today, we're checking out the complete Cyberpunk 2077 bundle, including two versions of V and their sick looking bike. Now, this is a review sample sent to me by Pure Arts. They have not told me to say good things. All opinions, as always, are 100% my own. If you are looking to grab this bundle or anything individually, I have popped the link to Pure Arts' site in the description below. It is an affiliate link. All proceeds will be reinvested back in the channel to make more reviews. While you're down in the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new 1-6 scale figure review goes live on the channel. I don't know about y'all, I'm a cyberpunk fan. I stuck with the game through all the glitches and the updates that fixed most of the glitches, and now they're working on a DLC. I'm super excited to jump back into the world of Cyberpunk 2077. I dig the world that they were building. Now, it's a bold move to make two figures from a game where you create your own character. These are based off the default appearances for V. This is pretty much what V looked like on the cover of the game. That's what these figures are based off. On the left, female V. On the right, male V. Down below, Cyberpunk 2077. And the colour palette that's going on here, it just slaps. We've got this neon yellow, some blue highlights, and some red thrown in there as well. On the side of the boxes, we've got a little bit of yellow and red down below. And the rest of it's pretty plain, except for a Pure Arts website link down below. Going with a translucent plastic slipcover in gloss for the clear sections and matte finish for all of the print work, the Samurai logo included, it's a neat effect. It adds a lot of depth. You can still see the yellow soaked cityscape underneath it, but you just add some more artwork over the top. And when you slide out the box, it reveals a hell of a lot more of that cityscape that otherwise would have been obscured by all of this printing. One of the things that I'm looking forward to most in this set, the bike, of course. Coming in a very close second, all of the sick looking firearms. That was one of my favourite things about the game, experimenting with all of these weapons. And now, in 1-6 scale, we have quite a few of them thanks to these two. Meaning, we can accessory share not just between these figures, but also with Hot Toys Johnny Silverhand. If you have him, you can also give him some of these weapons. First in hand impressions for female V, so far so good, liking the look of the outfit and the feel of the body in hand. Same thing with male V, he feels nice and sturdy. But his Chuck Taylors, they're on another level. I'm one of those people that if the game has any kind of character customization, I don't do it. Just in case a company makes a figure, they always go for the default appearance. So I leave mine stock, including the head. Luckily this time, it's paid off because that's exactly what happened. This looks like the default V. Alright, bike time. Oh yes, this is the moment I've been waiting for. The bike. This thing just off this image printed on the translucent slipcover. It looks beastly. Up top, Cyberpunk 2077, and a name that I am not even going to try to pronounce on camera. I will totally butcher that. They've kept everything consistent. Around the back, we've got the Samurai logo, just like the V's boxes, and the translucent slipcover. If you slide it off, you do have more of the cityscape and the palm trees hidden under this artwork printed over the top. I can already tell, this thing, it is going to be a centerpiece in a lot of people's Cyberpunk displays. First in hand impressions, oh my word, this thing is extremely heavy. I had no idea there was going to be as much die cast in this as there is. It feels cold to the touch, and like I said, just so bloody heavy. What we are going to do now though, is get all of the accessories that come with both these laid out in the light box, and take a closer look at everything they come with. For the sake of simplicity, I have popped all of Sheevee's accessories on the left side of the screen and all of Heavey's accessories on the right. Yeah, no, I tried it. Let's just go back to calling them male and female V. The display bases are the same for both figures. You've got some sculpted detail on the surface. It almost looks a little bit industrial. I don't know if I'm the only one seeing that, but the yellow on the dark background and these pipes and the gunmetal, it just all comes together and it gives me a very industrial vibe. Around the front, Cyberpunk on an Esh metal nameplate, and adding the yellow into the Cyberpunk logo, that's a very nice touch. On the underside, Cyberpunk, some legal info, 
and up top, an adjustable crotch grabber. Female V comes with a pistol as well as an SMG. The pistol is done in metallic silver for all the little detail bits and pieces, whereas the body of the gun is just flat black. You can remove this top piece entirely if you so choose. And you can take out the magazine, which is non-trivial to do. It is in there very securely. I guess that's a good thing, because the last thing you'd want is something so tiny to be falling out on you constantly. It locks in place, it's not an issue. The SMG, I love this red and metallic purple on the body of the weapon. You can extend out the stock at multiple different points, it's telescopic. And you can remove the magazine on this weapon as well. There isn't any painted bullet detail on either of them, unfortunately. You can also remove this top piece, it's just on a Picatinny style rail, so this gun is actually quite customizable from the stock to the top piece to the magazine. You can mess around with it. She also comes with a pair of asymmetrical swap out forearms, they are modded quite heavily, this one specifically. You can see the panels are lifting away from her skin, and there's a lot of depth there, these panels are actually 3D and raised, they're separate pieces. The hands are also different to the rest of the hands she comes with. If you wanted to use her standard forearms with these hands because her jacket comes down around here anyway, there's nothing stopping you. I'm tempted to do that too because swapping out the forearms is a bit of a challenge. Her hands are also asymmetrical. You do get matching sets for either side, open palm hands, trigger fingers, gripping hands, closed fists, the usual suspects. But on one side, you've got some panel detail on the inside of her hand. Whereas on the other, you still retain the black painted fingernails and a lot of skin texture, but you're missing that detail. Asymmetry is a surefire way to add some visual interest to your figures. Never a bad thing. Male V also comes with the same pistol as female V. I didn't notice this before with hers. It says Militech sculpted into the side. That's a really nice little attention to detail. You can still remove this top piece and the magazine, it's literally the same exact thing. This isn't. This LMG is huge. You can extend out the stock, the bipod can be moved down, got a lot of decals printed onto the surface, and the bullets painted with this vibrant blue, they are quite punchy against the gunmetal of the rest of the weapon. Then around this side, this is how he holds the gun. There's a handle on the side of the weapon. That's crazy, usually it's of course down below, but there's this huge barrel thing down here and I assume that's some kind of bullet feeding storage, like a drum magazine of some kind. Either way, this weapon is sick. The guns are cool, nothing beats this Militech drone. I could be misremembering it has been a while since I played the game, but one of the earlier missions has you steal this little guy. And now we get him in 1-6 scale, and he's got a ton of articulation. You can tilt his head side to side, his top arms have multiple different joints, three in fact, one at the base, midsection, and the tip of his arm slash hand. The same thing goes for the feet. You can move this guy around and do some pretty decent posing. The sculpt work is relatively soft, but the decals are sharp. Because he is so small, that doesn't really bother me that it's a little bit softer. Just popping this nearby your cyberpunk figures, he can act as some set dressing, some world building if you will. Oh, and his legs are stable enough that he stands on his own, he doesn't need a display base or anything like that, he's quite stable. You do get a swap out forearm, and a spare double bend elbow joint. I guess in case you break these little pegs, which does happen from time to time, they can be a little bit brittle. This forearm is something else. You've got this huge blade on multiple different joints and a telescopic knife around the front that you can extend out even further. The hand has blood splatter on the back of it. It looks deep and rich and glossy. And all of these little linkages inside the arm, you have blood splatter in there too. This thing is straight nasty. But I still can't wait to try it out on V. Just like female V, male V's hands are asymmetrical. You've got some pads on the inside of his palms on the left side, but not the right. These are just normal hands. The skin texture looks good, but slightly different on this side for some reason. You get open palm hands, trigger fingers, gripping hands, and closed fists. What we are going to do now, though, is get the Vs themselves out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. With each segment in this review, we will be starting off with female V, then we'll move on to male V and the bike. She's interesting. 
And I do mean that in the best way possible. I didn't mean to sound so hesitant there. I was just trying to find the right adjective. There are certain things I really like, like the jacket. It is made of pleather though, so that is something to keep in the back of your mind. There's a lot of detail here on the surface of the outfit. It's well tailored. The body looks proportionate. The head sculpt, it's something that you might have to get used to. She's got short hair, it's red, so it's going to stand out. And the side of her head is shaved. Like I said, she is interesting. So is this dude, and I resonate more with him because I played as male V in my cyberpunk game. This guy has a much bigger jacket than female V does, still with the LED light up function. His outfit is also nicely tailored, the proportions on the body look realistic enough, and the head sculpt? I actually like. I think this is a dead ringer for the V on the cover of cyberpunk. Now he does struggle to stand, hence why I went with the display base and I think the shoes might be the culprit. There is a party piece on the shoes that do make up for the fact that he is a little bit tricky to stand. He still can, it's just more challenging. I would say use the display base. Up close and personal, kicking things off with V's head sculpt. This time, I don't think I've ever said this. The head sculpt, it doesn't need to be the star of the show. That's the outfit, and the proportions, and the body, and the accessories, and the swap out pieces, and the bike, of course, gotta be the bike. This head sculpt is still good, it's just very generic. That's not my V, it's not probably your V, it's just the basic stock V. Technically speaking, yes, there's skin texture, the lips are nice and glossy, she's got a lip ring, the eyes are well painted, looking up ever so slightly. The shaved side of her head is convincing. Then on this side, she's got a lot of hair. It's bright red, there's a wash in it, you've got flow, texture, they look like individual strands of hair. And it is a soft rubber, so I don't think it should get in the way of articulation. She's got some sculpted line work for the mods, and she's even wearing some earrings. So like I said, technically speaking, yes, it's a very good head sculpt. But... That's not my V. So if you wanted to, you could get a custom head sculpt representing your particular V from the game and put it on the body. There's nothing stopping you. Speaking of the body and the outfit by proxy, this jacket having a light up function up the top that you can easily switch on and off with this little panel, it's just very clever. And the jacket is removable. It's fully self-contained. The power source is not in the body. It's in the jacket. There's a pouch around the back with a little battery that you slot into this compartment and it just sits here. No problem, no fuss, you don't have to mess around with it, it's very, very straightforward. The LEDs up top are awesome, very vibrant and blue. You also have various little buttons and pins and patches. And around the back, a massive samurai logo. And up top, it also says samurai. The body underneath the jacket, it does have some muscle definition to it. You can make out her abs, her belly button. You also have some skin texture on the surface, and it is made of this rubbery material. It does match the head sculpt enough. It's not a perfect match between the skin tone of the neck and the body. It's not far off enough to cause me any issues. I'm totally fine with how it looks. You can modify this if you want her to not wear the jacket. You can remove it. Then you will expose all of the various joints on the body. For me, I'm definitely going to keep the jacket on. If you are interested in swapping out her arms for the alternative versions though, this was not easy to accomplish. I had to take the jacket off, remove the stock forearms, they were plugged in super securely, and then plug the new ones on, and because these ones are a little bit thicker, threading them through the arms of the jacket, then rolling the sleeves up, it was a challenge. And I would say that this pleather jacket, it probably wouldn't hold up to removing it constantly, then sliding it up and down the forearms. Pick your display option. Do it once and save yourself the hassle of trying to do it over and over again and potentially damaging the jacket as well. The forearms are now asymmetrical. This one is a lot chonkier than this one. And this is how I'm going to display V in my collection. They just look so much cooler. Rolling up the sleeves, you expose all of the mod work and the skin texture. They're nicely painted. Even though they look a little bit flatter than the regular forearms, that makes sense. These are cybernetic pieces. They wouldn't look as realistic as normal skin tone. You can also extend out the fingers so there's some red and yellow detail underneath. That's a nice touch and something that I totally wasn't expecting. 
Oh, and you can do that on both sides, depending on how you want to display her. Coming down to these legs, these pants, they've got so much going on. You've got these chains around the front with some carabiners. The chains are real metal, the carabiners are plastic. The pants are pleather, you've got some ribbing, you've got some defined knee pads which are separate pieces of sculpted plastic. And her boots, they are badass, they're huge. And they're split cut boot designs, which means you'll know it, maximum range of motion. Which is required, if you want this V to be riding the bike, you would need to be able to get the foot to move forward and back. The integration of this shoe into the top part of the boot, it looks completely seamless. Initially, I thought this was one sculpted piece, but it isn't. It's a split cut design. On the underside of the boots, some sculpted tread. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty tempted to 3D print a head sculpt of myself, have it painted, and then install it on this body. Not because my in-game character looked anything like me, he didn't. He looked more like this. I kept it generic so that he would match the figure. It would still be nice to have some representation of myself in the collection, so I might just get that done, or maybe not, who knows. This head sculpt looks the part. It's definitely V from the game, when you first start at least. He's got a beard down below with some skin tone poking through, that looks natural. Some chunks taken out of his eyebrows, some earrings on one side. And the hair? Yeah, there's scalp poking through and there's a lot of flow up the top. There's plenty to like about this head sculpt. This jacket is just as cool as the other Vs. It is brown pleather, that's something to be aware of. You've got the samurai logo in the middle. Up the top it says samurai. You've also got two little pieces of what would be tape in the game, I suppose, keeping the jacket together. Maybe it's been battle damaged. Down the bottom, this is stretchy for the black portion, and the same thing for the cinching material around the wrists, keeping it nice and tight around his hands. Up the top, you've got one panel and a wiring harness, I guess. Some ribbing, various little patches and a button. And the LEDs, they work in the same way as the other V's jacket. There's a pouch on the inside around the back with a button cell battery in it. You flick the switch, and then his LEDs turn on at the top here. With male V, this isn't the only thing that lights up on him. Underneath the jacket, he's just wearing a black t-shirt, and the skin tone match between the neck and the head sculpt is perfect, because it's one thing, the neck is part of the head sculpt, unlike the other V. You do still get a swap out forearm, but I forgot to mention on the female V, you do have the wrist-mounted doohickey if you roll up his sleeves or her sleeves. Yeah, it's right there. I'm obscuring his shoes on purpose. I do not want to give away one of the coolest things that I have ever seen on a 1-6 scale figure. You will see what I mean in just a second. The belt is black, it's adjustable, there's a buckle around the front. The pants have this denim-like weave on the surface. The stitching is very clean and contrasting. And you have some working pockets front and back. Down below for his chucks, oh yes, they light up. This is awesome. You can turn them off if you don't like that. I do like it. The edge light having this natural gradient where it's darker towards the back, super vibrant at the front, and no light bleed. This is perfect. This is a very neat light up function. Got some sculpted laces. They look like chucks with the tongues hanging out. Talk about attention to detail, there's even a QR code up top. If someone wants to scan that and let me know where that goes, the comment section right down there, have a crack. There's some texture on the surface that looks like the canvas of the shoes, speckling of dirt and grime on the toe cap and around the edges, plus the soles, they are fully painted and quite filthy. You can see the light up switch obviously around the back, at least it's on the underside of the soles. It's not super obvious unless you flip the figure around and you're looking for it. What about the switch out forearm I hear you ask? Well, I'm pretty curious myself actually. Okay, so female V's switch out forearms, they were one thing, they were interesting. This is so much more than interesting. It's gruesome and it's badass. It's a huge bladed weapon. You can extend the blade out, it's telescopic, you can even bring it forward if you so choose. There's speckling of blood, it's nice and wet and glossy. Is it V's blood or is it someone else's? Up to you to decide. There's some linkages sculpted in there, painted in red, some white panels, also some gunmetal sections. And the hand is on a wrist peg, so you can move it forward and back to make it look like he's moving his hand forward so the blade can come out and stab someone. 
Now his hand does sit a lot lower than the other side, which can throw off the proportions. In a pose, I personally don't think it's a big deal. Plus it makes sense, all of this stuff is extending out of the forearm, so it would be a little bit longer. I'm just going to come right out and say it. This bike is worth the price of admission alone. It's super heavy, like seriously heavy. There is a lot of die cast here. This entire side panel, all die cast metal. The pedals, metal. Parts of the main body underneath these plastic panels, die cast. Even this kickstand is made of metal, which all adds up to a super sturdy and high quality feeling bike. Enough gushing, let's focus on some details. Starting off with the back tyre, it's nice and chonky, you do have some tread sculpted into the surface, and it is made of rubber so it feels authentic, like a real tyre shrunk down to 1 6 scale. This helps with that, I'm not sure if you can see on camera, in person you can see it and feel it. Sculpted into the surface, you have the details of what type of tyre this is, that is some crazy attention to detail. You also have RX 7000 up top, it pops in white on the red background. And down below, Aurora. In the middle of the wheel, a pop of metallic blue, that always helps. You can also rotate the tyre around, it rolls pretty freely. It is padded, so even though this is rubber, I don't think it's going to deform if you have this bike, it's quite heavy, sitting on this tyre for a long period of time. I think it's sturdy enough, so it should stay circular forever. They've also added some speckling of dirt and grime onto the surface, makes it look nice and worn. The front tyre is skinnier than the back one, and I like that. This bike would of course be rear wheel drive, this one handles all the steering, whereas this one it gets all the power. They've added a spring for suspension, a lot of little decals, RX 7000 and Aurora printed on this part rather than the tyre this time, but they've still sculpted the various little details on what type of tyre this is. And they've added all that speckling of dirt and grime just like the back one. Paint applications, they are very, very sharp. You've got a metallic red as a base, this being die cast makes it look extra shiny and metallic. Then over the top of that, silver dry brushing in various places, yet not overdone, it's tasteful. We also have some speckling of dirt to match the tyres on the pedals, which are made of die cast, and down the side of the bike. And just so many decals. We've got the nuclear symbol, we've got warnings, we've got the name of the bike. We even have a couple of really neat ones up the top. The samurai one I like, and also this US Air Force symbol. It kind of reminds me of the bike from Akira. I think that's what they were going for with the overall shape and the bright punchy red. The engine alone has a lot going on. We've got a mod chip with the wiring harnesses working their way into the engine, some hoses and pipes, the rear suspension around the back in metallic red so it stands out against the silver of the piston it's sitting on. Then down here for the exhaust, it says caution because you can see this would be superheated metal. We've got some metallic blue, yellow and purple for some heat treatment. Up the top, they've even printed the part number for the seat. That is some crazy detail. This kickstand is made of metal, and there is no flex to it at all. It is nice and solid. You can rotate it up if you don't want it there, or when you put it down, yeah, I reckon this thing will have no problem holding the bike. So everything the bike has going for it so far, it's very heavy because it's made of metal, mostly. It's super well painted, and there's a lot of attention to detail here. The one, the final thing, the selling point for I'm sure a lot of people, it's got a light up feature. We can now remove this, which was very satisfying to do on camera. Around the front, headlights, and around the back you have a tail light as well. But up the top, you can see that the speedo is now lit up. This bike is going 80 miles an hour. It's not the brightest light up in the world, you can still see it though, and it just adds a little bit more life to the bike in the display. Also, while we're back here, you do have a license plate with a barcode printed on it, and being able to move all of this stuff, the tyres, rotating it round, having the handlebars off to the side, kickstand or no kickstand, rotating these pedals, this bike is kind of customizable. You can have it displayed however you like, lights on, lights off, mess around with it, have fun. It almost looks like he's putting together a band. In the middle, Hot Toys Johnny Silverhand for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, both Vs flanking him. The Pure Arts Vs, they look right at home alongside Johnny. They are shorter than him, in real life Keanu Reeves is a tall dude, and V 
is a made-up character. I'm perfectly fine with the scaling. It doesn't make a ton of sense that you have both Vs next to him, considering in the game you have to pick the gender and there's just one V because V is you in 1 6 scale. I like the idea of representing both genders for V. Now throwing the bike in the mix, you can see that this thing is no slouch. It's relatively large. It needs to be, it's a 1 6 scale bike. So popping the Vs or Johnny Silverhand on it, it needs to be in scale, which I think it is. See, that looks about right. You can probably tell where this is going. I am 100%, no question, displaying this Johnny Silverhand figure on this bike. Going over V's articulation, both versions are on two completely different bodies. So we will go over both of them because I'm pretty curious to see how they differ. Starting off with her head sculpt, it's on a rubbery neck with a ball joint at the bottom and up top, another ball joint. Looking forward to there, her hair does not get in the way. Looking back to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, forward and back. There's also a butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going past 90, and her wrist peg is a hinge and swivel. The torso crunches forward and back, further back than forward for some reason, swivel and pivot side to side. Her legs will go forward to there, higher than I was expecting given the pleather pants, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee going past 90, and seeing as though the boots are on double ball pegs and a split cut boot design, They'll go forward and back. You also get swivel as well as ankle tilt. Next up for male V, starting off with his head sculpt. It's on a fixed neck with a ball joint at the bottom. Looking forward to there, looking up to there. Decent for a bike riding pose. Swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there. They will go forward and back. Butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going past 90, and for the wrist peg, a hinge and swivel. The torso crunches forward and back, completely unhindered by the light up function because it's all contained in the jacket. Swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, they are fighting me, maybe a little bit further. Going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee going past 90. I still can't get over these light up chucks going forward and back because the tongue is so far out, you can get a little bit further forward than you can back, swivel as well as some ankle tilt. Wrapping up on both Vs, female and male from Cyberpunk 2077, and the bike. We will talk about the bike because that's all I want to discuss really. The Vs are serviceable. They look like the default main characters from the game. They're not the best, highest quality figures I've ever seen in 1-6 scale. They're not the worst either. And they've got some very clever engineering. The swap out forearms, the male V with the huge blade is my favourite, the light up jacket, the light up Chuck Taylors. There is a lot going on here and the more I think about it, the more I'm starting to like these figures. I am warming up to them. My favourite character from Cyberpunk, even though we didn't get to play as him as much as I would like, was Johnny Silverhand, which is crazy because you spend most of the time as V. But you don't get to see a lot of V, you see Johnny Silverhand a lot as he's appearing in random places and talking to you. So the face of that game, for me personally, is still Keanu Reeves as Johnny Silverhand. I still like having these Vs, I will be displaying them proudly, but Johnny and the bike? That's the pair that I had in my mind going into this review. Now that we're here, oh, the bike is brilliant. If you are super excited for it like I was, you are going to love this thing. It's super hefty. It's full of die cast. It's got light up functions. It's got rubber tires that roll. It's got moving bits and pieces. It can stand on its own. There is so much to love about the bike, and I guarantee you, you will. So at the end of this, do I recommend the bundle for the weapons? and the light up jackets on the Vs, and the light up shoes on the male V in particular, and the bike, and the swap out modded forearms for both characters? I think I can. If you're in the market for more Cyberpunk 2077 goodness in 1.6 scale, this might just be the bundle for you. I have popped the link to Pure Art's website in the description below. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.